Orchestra to uh, Lightworks, and uh, we're really excited for y'all to be here. And you know, we want to have more events like this in the future. And, you know, share share everything you know because that's how we're able to grow individually, but also as a collective group. Um, and so today we have Emmanuel here. He is going to speak about the Emotion Code, and you know, he is a well known uh, Emotion Code practitioner. So. Um, you know, we have a sign-in sheet going around, so make sure everyone signs up with their uh, information so we can send out messages, and we'll be sending out texts of future events, and you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and on Meetup at Vegas Vibrations, and uh, be up to date about what's happening in the future. And we'll be having probably more monthly events um, and the future with different topics. So if you guys have any suggestions, let us know. We're open, you know, we're very about making sure everybody is learning what they want to learn. So if you have any ideas and kind of what we can be talking about in the future, let us know. So without further ado, Emmanuel, can you come up? That uh, water machine is really loud. I was going to put some water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's not a I'm glad you guys are here. Um, how many of you guys uh, are like a friend of mine that we've met before? Anybody a friend of mine? Don't be shy. Okay, cool. How many of you guys are here because you have no idea why you're here? Anybody? Don't be shy. Yes. Two? Okay, cool. There's three. Anybody? Um, yeah, I'm just curious kind of where you guys came from. So, um, so I just want to share a real quick story. I hope you guys like stories. Um, but uh, based out here in Las Vegas, my name's Emmanuel. I'm a body code practitioner. Uh, I work with um, the founder, Dr. Bradley Nelson, who, who founded the Emotion Code Body Code about 11 years ago. But I wanted to share a real quick story. Hopefully, you guys can relate to this real quick. So, um, how many of you guys have seen people out there that uh, you know they're they got a newspaper over them and they're kind of like you know homeless? They don't you know they just you know you've seen those people. Everyone's seen those people. So, there's a story of, of this of this guy who's who's you know under this paper, and all of a sudden he wakes up in the morning. And there's a paper that falls like literally right on his face, like the wind just you know hits him, and it says you know town square like uh, town banquet, you know, and he got, he got all excited. He's like, hey, town banquet. I said, what does that mean? So he goes in there, he's like, food for everyone, food for the whole town, you know. And he's like, he's excited. Right? How many of you guys would be excited about going to like free food in the town? Anybody think? Yeah. 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 All the other people just like to starve or whatever. <laughs> so so. So he went, so he's like, well, this can't be, you can't feed the whole town, it's not possible. So then he, uh, he said, like, you know what, what do I have to lose? But then he reaches into his pocket, and he just finds, you know, a couple of almonds. You know, like, he had, like, six almonds. You know, two for the morning, two for the afternoon, two for the night, you know? Uh, in, in my case, when I was really broke, it was, like, ramen in the morning, ramen with some chicken, and then, like, ramen with rice, like, you know, so that's, that's where I was. So, uh, really bad food, by the way. So, so what happened was, is he went over to this town banquet and he saw this huge line going around the corner. He's like, oh my gosh, this could be real. This is real. Why would all these people be standing here? So he stands in line and he's just waiting. There's this huge, huge line. He's just waiting like two hours. He's like, yeah, everyone's probably eating food. And uh, he goes up to the bouncer and the bouncer stops him and says, you can't come in here. Because I guess he was like fiddling around with his pockets. He's like, what do you have in your pockets, you know? And he's like, I just have these, these almonds. Um, I just want to see if this is real. Can I just like peek in there real quick, you know? And he's like, yeah, you can't do that. He's like, you have to um, leave everything behind. And then he says, well, <coughs> what if it's not real though? I only have almonds. I'm like, this is my only food. And so he's like, sorry, sir, you can't. He's like, just, just one little peek. I, I promise, once I see the peek, I'll get rid of the almonds. He said, no, sorry, you can't go inside. And so what happened was, is he cried and he just left. But he didn't realize that there was a town banquet, there was a bunch of food there, but the question I have for you guys is what almonds or what things do you have in your life are holding you back from a full-on banquet, right? Mm -hmm. And what I found out is that when I entered into this world, the emotion code world, there's energies, there's, there's energetic imbalances that are holding us back from our full potential. How many of you guys believe that we're emotional, energetic beings? Anybody? Okay, so we're, we're talking to the right crowd here. And for those of you who don't believe that, we're about to find out. We're going to do some tests in front of up here to show you guys how much we are emotional, energetic beings. And so let me just share with you guys my real quick story. And um, first of all, uh, I grew up with two doctors, two oncologists and hematologists, you know, and so very rough crowd, you know, a little bit of time. And uh, it was interesting because my mother was all into holistic health and my dad wasn't. 
And so I'd be eating my macaroni and cheese, and then they would be bickering about, ah, oh, you can't do that. There's no clinical trials on that, blah, blah, blah. And so I, I grew up with that. And I was like, can I just watch Full House and eat my macaroni and cheese? <laughs> you know? And so, um, so what happened was is um, I, in July 2015, I got into a state of malaise. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, my relationship wasn't where it was supposed to be. Um, my finances weren't that great. Uh, I didn't know what my mission was in life. Uh, I was drinking a lot of uh, caffeine drinks to just you know, stay awake because I was tired all the time, chronic fatigue. How many of you guys have ever felt sick and tired of being sick and tired? Anybody? Come on. Somebody's lying back there. Okay. So, <clears throat> so everyone's been there, right? And the reality is, is that um, when I look into self-development, like you know, reading good books, I realize that like, for example, The Secret. How many of you guys watch The Secret? Anybody watch The Secret? Yeah. So it's a great thing. But here's what's interesting is that how many of you guys have friends that have watched The Secret and they're like, okay, cool, vision boards, affirmations, mantras, but then they're like still there where they were like a year ago. And you're like, wait a minute. Yeah, so you guys, right? Like, does The Secret actually work? Like, if I take a hundred people, how come only like, how come only like 10 of those people actually did what they said they were going to do? And the 90 stayed behind. Anyone ever wonder that? So we're going to talk about uh, the emotion code today. And um, on July 2017, Amazon uh, actually just recommended a book and said suggested read. Like I'm like I want to like write Amazon CEO and say thank you for your algorithm because that's how the book showed up in my lap. And um, I read it. I got certified in May 2016. And um, you know I've worked with maybe 4,000 people in the last two years. So I definitely like put my head to the ground. Uh, I think right now our practice works with about 100 people a week, so we stay very, very busy. And um, I became very, very good friends with Dr. Bradley, who created this thing. And so uh, I just want to share with you guys what I know. Uh, if you guys are ready, say I'm ready. Ready! Okay, so, let's see here. So hopefully this works for people. All right, so obviously we know this, that everything is energy, right? And so we're going to kind of start with the basics here. Uh, some in physical form and some in physical form. So we're all pure beings of energy. And um, here's what's really interesting is that many people call it different names, uh, but the reality is is like, when I, um, when I started looking into Dr. Bradley Nelson's book, for those of you guys who haven't read this book, it's, for me, this has been the most life-changing book in the world, called The Emotion Code by Dr. Brad. And um, when I read this book, it started talking about these funny things, kind of like, you know, when people donate organs to someone else, all of a sudden that person has like the same mannerisms as the person who passed away or something like that. You know, I'm like, that's really interesting. You know, and then also, you know, they have these amazing um, photographs where um, called curly photography. And when you cut a leaf, all of a sudden for some reason, there's an outline of where like almost like the spirit of the leaf was there. I'm like, what? How does that work? So it just he threw me into that world. Like I wasn't ready for it. And uh, I wasn't looking for an energy healing book, I was looking for a self-development book, and all of a sudden I'm like, wait, this is energy healing, I don't know if I should read the rest of this thing. And then, uh, but it caught my attention because why? Sick and tired of being sick and tired, you see? And so um, life was pressing on me, right? So, so there's different ways to, in this invisible body, the spirit that we have, but how many of you guys have ever seen that, uh, that huge glacier, and then we say the top is the, uh, you know, it's your conscious mind, and the bottom is your subconscious mind. That's a, that's a great photo, I man. I applaud that photo, that's really deep stuff, but it's like, but if I can't tap into that subconscious mind, we got problems, because that glacier is what took down the Titanic, and I'm about to fall down in, uh, into the water and do a whole like Leonardo DiCaprio scene. But you know, I really think, have you ever seen that meme where it's like, he could have fit on that yeah. piece of wood? Okay, all right, so anyway, that's <laughs> so, so what are emotions, right? So this is what this is what Dr. Brad found. So what he was doing, he had, he had a chiropractic business uh, for 20 years, and he started seeing all these people come in that had incurable diseases, and he started praying, just kind of like asking for help, right? And all of a sudden, he got inspiration that he's supposed to go uh, back into ancient cultures where they believe that your organs are these frequency generators. Okay, so these organs are creating a certain frequency and they're creating these emotional energies. And we're gonna talk about that. And the problem is, is um, you know, obviously emotions are good. You know, it's good to feel when people say, oh, I'm so depressed, I'm like, great. I'm like, you're a human, you know, and it's okay to be depressed, but is it okay to stay depressed for a really long time? That might be harmful for you. That might not be effective for your life, right? And we all agree that, that depression's okay, but just to stay depressed for a really long time may not, not, may not be too constructive, right? And so, we're pure vibrational energy, 
generated by organs and glands. So what's interesting is these, uh, these energies, picture these little size of a tennis ball or cantaloupe, gets processed through our body. And the problem is that if it's overcharged, it's like deep sadness, deep anger, deep frustration, these energies can get stuck. They don't process properly. And they, and they get lodged into the organ that created it. So for example, liver uh, is anger, bitterness, guilt, hatred, resentment. So that's why when people drink too much alcohol, they have too much caffeine, they have a fatty liver, uh, what comes up very easy? Anger, bitterness, guilt, hatred, resentment. Um, how many of you guys know Christopher Reeve? Anybody know Christopher Reeve? Right. Who, 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 who was he? Superman. 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 The real Superman. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little debate there too. Um, but um, I think, okay, I'm not going to go there. So, the, uh, so Superman um, was Superman for a long time until what happened? He fell off the horse, right? So he became paraplegic, right? But do you guys know what happened to his wife? Do you know what she died of? Lung cancer. So here's the thing. So no one knows why she died of lung cancer. She has no history of lung cancer, no smoking cigarettes, not living in a, in a casino where there's lots of people secondhand smoking. So what made her die of lung cancer? See, Dr. Brad, his theory is that in the emotion code chart, with the 60 emotions that you can get trapped in your body, uh, in the lung area, it's grief. Let me ask you this question. If you married someone like Christopher Reeve, who's super athletic, an amazing actor, all these different things, and then all of a sudden becomes paraplegic, what do you think you might do? Do you think you might grieve for the life that you used to have? Sure. So he's, she started feeling grief. And when trapped emotions get stuck in the body, it can irritate the tissues, then it can, it can create disease, then it can create cancer. You see, so, so it's, it's in the emotion code world, it makes perfect sense why she got lung cancer. The Western world's like, I have no idea what would happen after emotions. Emotional baggage, right? Now when I walk around, guys, I don't know if you guys know this, but I have these special glasses where I can see how much emotional baggage someone has. <laughs> that would be crazy, right? You guys would like to invite me to your house and be like, oh, tell me my fiance is way too much. Um, uh, I would be rich with those glasses. Um, so, so the thing is that we all have emotional baggage, right? Uh, I mean, uh, and even in the movie The Secret, he goes like, everyone has traumatic pasts, you know? And then Jack Canfield starts confessing things. You guys remember that part? They go like, you know, I was homeless for like 10 years. I think it was like Joe Vitale said he was like, you know, he was homeless for 10 years. He says, you know, I got into a horrible car accident or I got into a horrible, horrible. So everyone has, can we all agree, we have some interesting times when we were kids, right? Uh, we were being programmed, right? And so this is how trapped emotions can affect us emotionally, physically, it can cause problems immediately or decades later. Okay, so so, yeah, so trapped, that's pretty that's pretty cool. Photo. So trapped emotion, um, they're usually the size of a tennis ball or candle, a little bit exaggerated there, but um, it's a ball of vibrating energy. And uh, what's really interesting is I actually had Dr. Brad. Um, how many of you guys are familiar with muscle testing? You know familiar? Yeah. So uh, we're doing some muscle testing today in front of all you guys, and we're going to release some trapped emotion so you guys see what it looks like. So if anyone, so if you guys want to. Move some, let me look, can you guys do me a favor? Just move your shoulders real quick. You guys can move your shoulders real quick? Okay. How many of you guys feel like, oh, dude, I need a masseuse? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> we'll be calling on you today, okay? What, what about, like, move your neck a little bit. I don't know what to do. Move your neck. Move, move some neck tension. You want to use neck tension? Same person. This, this one's really loud. Okay? Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, it hurts, yeah. So, we're probably going to bring you up later on. Um, so, we're going to work on, your, uh, on some pain. If, if, if they can visibly see that pain goes down and release emotions, Will that increase her testimony that this is real? Yeah, so I meet with about 16 people a day, and the first thing I work on is just like, tell me where your pain is. You know, and then I was like, my neck, it's always tense, you know? It's like, but it's probably because of, and they say like, the workout, or, you know, or my, my, my husband gives me all these problems, you know, whatever. And I go, it could be other things like trapped emotions. I know, I worked with a lady today, and I was releasing some, some uh, trapped emotions that leave us on her shoulder, and her whole shoulder pain went down from like, maybe like a five to a one. And it was like within 10 minutes, that five minutes. She's like, what is going on? And then I go, it's crazy that 75% of your pain came from your divorce at age 25. So you see, so she, she like, her body does not have peace with 25. And then her body, because she wasn't listening to her body, it started giving her pain in her shoulder. And uh, so we're gonna talk about what these things could do. Um, so most people have hundreds. You might have 300, 400. Um, who knows? Trapped emotions can cause problems. So, 
Yeah, so these are the, the different phases of trapped emotions. It can, it can, it can cause emotional or physical pain. Uh, so there's, there, I always tell people three things. One is it can, it can irritate the tissues uh, of your body. Um, you know, uh, how many of you guys know someone, watch this, look around here, this is interesting. How many of you guys know someone who has fibromyalgia? Okay, how about someone who has rheumatoid arthritis? See? So it's not like someone knows someone that's dealing with pain all over the body, but Dr. Brad has had a lot of success with people that uh, rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia could just be trapped emotions gone wild, you know? And, um, and it also, also can create multiple, uh, like, you know, um, who here has headaches? Anybody have headaches at all? Okay, you guys have headaches? Headaches can also do that too. Um, irritable bowel syndrome, I mean, any type of physical ailment you might have actually has an emotional baggage attached to it. Dr. Brad said that not every trapped emotion is, or emotional baggage has created cancer, but every cancer has an emotional baggage attached to it. That's what Dr. Brad said. So, um, and then also, it can create multiple emotional issues. How many of you guys know someone who's dealing with depression? Anybody know, know depression? Okay. How many people know someone who's dealing with anxiety? Okay. What about PTSD? Do you know PTSD? Yeah. And now some of you guys have it, and you guys are going like, I'm not going to tell them that I have it. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. I'll find you later on. Um, but see, it can, cause, it can cause multiple emotional uh, issues as well. Um, it's such a beautiful thing. Uh, for me to work with someone, uh, less than six hours, and somebody in a different state, and for his depression to go from like a seven out of ten to go like, I really don't feel depression. It's been like months since he's felt it. I mean, energetically, I'm working with him long distance. I'll tell you guys how that works. And so, uh, so these are all the things we're gonna just yeah, that's a lot of stuff, right? So, um, in fact, some of you guys know why. Okay, maybe not. Okay, so let's go back here again. Um, just wanna see where. Stopped. Okay, so you guys might be taking a photo of this. Uh, Alright, so all these things could literally be uh, have some type of emotional baggage behind it. Amazing, right? Uh, okay, I'm not going to ask that question. Uh, I'm like, wait, issues. No, we're not going to do that. So um, I grew up with three women, you don't do that. But, but um, what's interesting is that, did you know that if I were, have you guys done, you guys know about the sway test at all? How many of you guys know the sway test, right? If I were to ask some people in this room, say a statement where it says, I feel safe losing weight. And what's really interesting is most of you guys would go way back. You're like, hey, why am I going back? It's because your body doesn't feel safe losing weight. Why, why, why would that be? That's weird. And then, I, I, that's why I always find it funny when I talk to clients. I'm like, do you want to lose weight? It's like, of course, of course I do. I'm like, yeah, but your subconscious doesn't. It's like, what? Excuse me? Like, yeah. And I go, I go, the last time you lost weight, what type of relationship were you? Last time you lost weight, what type of job did you detest and despise and hate? And last time you lost weight, maybe when you were young and you had a little bit of weight, how was your mother and father treating you at the time? And how did your mother talk to you during that time? So there's trauma with losing weight. And if you don't remove that trauma, you could do all the workouts you want, you could do all the, like the right diet, everything, but you're like, I can't, what is going on? Well, it's because your subconscious is sabotaging you, okay? Um, how many of you guys would like to add a comma to your bank account? Anybody would like to add a comma? Okay, okay cool. I'd go for two. No, no, no. Two no. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. So, here's the reality is that if I invited most of you guys up here, and, I, and you guys said the statement, I feel safe with financial abundance. Do you guys know where you guys would go back? You guys would <laughs> and, and, then, and then I'd be like, I'd be like, come on, try really hard going forward. Like, I'm still going back. So, what, what's going on there? There's trauma with money, too. The last time you had a lot of money, Uncle Bob borrowed money and never returned it back. Yeah, that's a problem, see, and, that, and that's trauma. Uh, or what about your dad who started making money but then cheated on your mom? Is that, is that money trauma? Oh yeah, that's money trauma. So there's, you're, you're not okay with money and financial abundance. Until I open that block, we're not gonna make any money. So it's, it's, it's interesting that it's imbalances going on. So here are also emotional things. Um, Stuff yeah, even phobias. There is one that I need to work on myself. I have a phobia of static electricity. It's weird. Um, but uh, and mosquitoes. So I gotta figure that out. That, that, it's got, I'm not perfect, right, guys? So I got, I got work to do. Um, but uh, I think I even went to a car show or something like that. Like I was a kid or something. You know, maybe. I don't know. But um, look at all these different things. I mean, look at this list. Some of us are dealing with some of these things right now. 
and you don't have to deal with it anymore. And maybe you guys have, how many of you guys have read, just be honest with you, let's be real. How many of you guys have read a lot of books on a certain subject, but you feel like you haven't really changed in that area in your life? How many of you guys? Be honest, let's be real. There's a lot of audios you listen to, you're just like, I'm still not moving in that area, right? Well, it's because there's energies that are not allowing you to move. Um, here's a beautiful thing. Um, one last question here. Last couple questions, a little bit. Uh, how many of you guys know someone in the, in the military who has PTSD? Anyway? Okay. Just letting you guys know, please contact me because um, I work with PTSD veterans and I, uh, I offer them free services until they get out of PTSD, depression, anxiety. I work with 12 PTSD veterans, zero PTSD involved. So they could look at 11 years of war. Be like, and, and, I, and we could talk about it before they would start shaking and their throats get all choked up. I even had someone uh, go into a seizure while I was talking about it. But the reality is, is that now I don't have that. What did I do? I just it's trapped emotions, you know. And so, um, so I'll help them. Just put it my way. So let's talk about this. Uh, trapped emotions can be from any time in life. Uh, some are even inherited. There's a 2000, um, there's a 2015 Scientific American that talks about. Um, how Holocaust victims, uh, their great 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 grandkids uh, have trauma. They have anxiety, PTSD, and depression. Right? How, how does that work? Well, they did a test on, on rats. And I don't know if you guys have heard about this test, but it's really interesting that the mom, they would, they would put her in a maze, and right when she got to a certain corner here, by the way, I'm against this test, because I don't really like this test, let's leave it to the rat. But they, but they shot the rat, and then the rat, then they take the rat out of that area. But then that rat has a child. Later on, what they do, they put the child in the same exact maze, the child's going around and the child gets stuck in the same area where the mom got shot. You see? So in lower grade animals, they have scientific proof that energies can get passed down up to like 10 levels. 10 levels. So your dog has been kind of like, like it seems like my dog's sad all the time. They're like the mom, 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 that dog, something happened way up there that actually passed down all the way to that dog. I mean, you guys know dogs have emotions, right? Um, I'll tell you a dog, early dog story. You know. Actually, I'll tell you a, little, a cool dog story now. So, um, how many of you guys like Chihuahuas? Anybody like Chihuahuas? Come on now, Chihuahuas are cute. <laughs> Who hates Chihuahuas? <laughs> anyway, there, there's, this, there's this really cute Chihuahua, right? We're watching the hockey game, everyone's watching. And uh, what's interesting is this, this, uh, this Chihuahua, for the first time I met, uh, was uh, limping on its, uh, its one leg. And uh, I've already worked on the whole family, because that's what that's what happens when you tell them that you're an emotion code practitioner and you help people with healing. It's all of a sudden my dinner gets cold and they're just like, do 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 healing, like help me. Like, you know, so the whole family's like, I'm working with the whole family. People forget about the hockey game. And then they all go to the hockey game, but then I'm looking at this little dog limping. And I asked the owner, I was like, hey, so what's up with your dog? And um, she's like, oh, she fell off the bed a month ago. So she's doing this little limp. And I'm like, why don't you guys do something? Like, just bandage this? Like, make us, you know? And she said, well, I mean, what are we going to do? Just, you know, just bandage her up. You know, I was like, that's not right. So then I said, um, I'm going to work on your dog. Can you, you, you give me permission? I know it sounds crazy. Some of you guys have already, I know some of you guys have already checked out. Oh, like, there's no way he healed that dog. But what's happened is I just, I worked on the dog. I asked for some help in my mind. And then I connected with the dog. And I said, do you have physical trauma on, that, on, that, on this life? And right? And then, no, 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 the dog was asleep. That's fine. And I woke. Like, yes. No, the dog, the dog was asleep. The dog was asleep. Um, that was good. The dog was asleep. And, um, and so I said, did you have physical trauma? And the body said yes. Right? I guys know muscle test and you guys know this is yes, this is no, right? So it says yes. And so I, I released it. I, I used my hand. I didn't have a magnet. Uh, and I used it on my gathering marine and it released from the dog. Now, and I said, do you have inflammation energy in it? See, I know the body code, so I kind of know some energies that most people don't know about. So I go, do you have inflammation energy? Because that's typical of physical trauma. And the body said yes. And I go, okay, cool. I'm going to release that. And I'm like, are there any trapped emotions involved with this prior to this? The body's like, no. I'm like, what about after? The body's like, yeah. And so I start looking at the chart of like nervousness, worry, anxiety, fear. This dog took four trapped emotions after what? It started limping. And it goes like, oh my gosh, what is going on with my leg? So it started doing those four trapped emotions. I released those. It woke up from its nap and started walking normally in the living room. And everyone freaked out. Everyone's like, is the dog walking normally now? What happens? Like, oh, yeah. And then the owner tried to cool down. It's like, yeah, you may have work with the dog. <laughs> but I'm just saying, even dogs have trapped emotions. And um, like some could be inherited. So the more you have, the more you'll create. So one of the things that, uh, that's interesting is trapped emotions make you very reactive. 
how many of you guys have been in a relationship and have said like, honey, I really didn't mean to say that, I don't know what came over me. Anybody say that before? If you haven't said that, you're single. There's no way that that's not happened before. So um, some people have said it today uh, on the phone. So um, the thing is, is these trapped emotions make you reactive. So for example, let's say this wonderful lady here, okay? Annie. Annie. Uh, let's say she felt sadness at age six. Let's even make it more interesting. Let's say that her great, 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 great grandmother was in a war and saw her husband leave and she felt deep sadness. And that started going through mother to mother to mother and went all the way to her. Now, because it's a really, it's an inherent emotion, it's heavy on her. For some reason, it's easy for her to feel sadness over and over and over again. Life gets hard on her, guess where she goes? Sadness. So because of that, though, she technically makes new trapped emotions of sadness. Does that make sense? Hopefully I'm not losing guys. So the inherent emotion kind of begets new trapped emotions. So if I to work with someone, they might have, who knows, 20 to 30, 40 trapped emotions. So how cool would it be that if you keep working with a practitioner or you figure out the emotion put by yourself, and you're releasing these energies of sadness, but the next time you feel sadness, you feel it, the, the trampolines off your body, and you're like, I'm over it. How many of you guys would think you'd be way more productive? It's okay to feel sad, but to, to keep it and to hold on to it, not good. So how many of you guys would think you'd be way more productive if it bounced off you? How many of you guys would think, yeah, way more productive, right? So technically, guys, you can say this, we're a reactive society, you know? Think about this. The last time someone posted something political on your Facebook, how ugly did that get, right? <laughs> Do you know that? You're just like, oh, like they unfollow, you know? Um, and so, and then when someone says something about like, hey, uh, the moon is out, that Mercury retrograde moon stuff, like, technically that's them saying that I have all permission to be a crazy woman that day, so I'm just slowly just avoiding her, you know what I'm saying? So, just telling you, uh, just trying to be real here. So, find a trap emotion. So, we can find and remove it together using the emotion code. So here's a great testimony. After the session, I felt amazing. Our accountant called, he had found investors for a real estate deal we were putting together, and several people expressed uh, emphatic interest for having the group participate in our work. These results were far beyond the results we were getting before we growing our business. So how do we expose trapped emotions? So first of all, I want you guys to uh, we're going to use a muscle testing here. If everyone can stand up over here, everyone can here to stand up. Okay. So some of you guys need to stretch because you guys have been working all day. You know? And so, if you guys can do me a small favor and um, close your eyes, everyone close your eyes. Put your feet a little bit apart. Okay. Go ahead, so you're steady, right? And so what you'll start noticing when you're doing this is that you'll start. You're kind of like wobbling a little bit. Okay. Uh, you're kind of like moving back, forward, like well, okay, I lose my balance. But I'm going to start saying some words, okay? And as I'm saying these words, later on, let me know where you tilted. Did you go forward or did you go back, okay? So here we go. So everywhere around you is desolate, and, and, but there's also buildings that have been brought down. There's a bunch of families that are crying everywhere. Families being split up. There's war. There's famine, people are not eating food. You can't find your home. You don't know what your mission is. You have no idea why you're even here. And you're walking around completely confused. And it's the darkest place you've ever seen. All right, go ahead, open your eyes. Okay, how many of you guys were leaning back? Hey guys. Okay, cool, okay. All right, let's, let's see this. Now everyone close your eyes again, okay? And now, Let's picture this one here. Um, so it's a beautiful, amazing, sunny day, and you're finally reaching your mission in life. You're finally reaching your mission in life. You're so excited you found it. For a while, you didn't think you had a mission, but you did. Now you have a mission. You're, you're happy you're with your family. Your family's been like never been more united. And everywhere you go, there's peace everywhere. Like everyone's getting along now. Everyone is connecting heart to heart. And all, everyone is, you're realizing all your friends, they all have missions too, and they're all reaching them. All right, go ahead and open your eyes. Okay, how many of you guys are swaying forward? You want to swing forward? Okay, yeah, so, so go ahead and sit down, guys. Okay, so, so what, what's interesting is like, we're, 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 kind of, we're kind of like the flower. Some of you guys, maybe you didn't sway. And the only reason why you might not sway, there's two reasons. Um, Number one, you're stubborn. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, you want to prove me wrong. No. 
Number one is um, you could be dehydrated. Don't drink enough water. Drink water. Number two is you could have a misalignment on your neck. And now you're like, what? And what does that have to do with anything? Well, Dr. Brad said it. Um, he says you might have a neck misalignment. And uh, sometimes when I work with people and I go, hey, I can't muscle test you. I'm like, hmm. And I'm like, oh, wait, the C6 of your neck. You know, so I have to work on the neck first, and all of a sudden it's realigned, and then now it works. So but we're, we're going to talk about, uh, is it time for me to journal? Let's do this. Uh, so raise your hand if you have um, shoulder tension. Shoulder tension. Anybody? OK, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to like, keep your hands up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect with you energetically. I'm going to see which one will be the best example for this room. So if you don't mind, you guys can give me all permission to connect with you, right? Okay, good. Okay, so keep raising your hand. Okay. Okay. okay, so that lady there in the... Okay. So uh, everyone say hi, Gina. Hi, Gina. Okay, so uh, is this AA? Uh, okay, so uh, what's your stronger arm? So what we're going to do here, let's see if this is better for you this game. So what we're going to do is, um, so um, you're going to put your hand on my shoulder, okay? You want to show it here? Okay, so let's see. I'm going to, um, so there's an area right here. You guys are familiar with this with muscle testing, right? So um, so say your name real quick. Gina. So say, my name is Gina. My name is Gina. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to push down on this, okay? And then I want you to resist the push-up. Okay. It's pretty simple, right? But I'm not going to, like, really slam it. I'm just going to just slowly put pressure on it, okay? okay? Just say, my name is Gina. My name is Gina. Okay, I'm going to push down. Okay, so try to try to resist, right? Yeah, there we go. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay, now say, my name is Bob. My name is Bob. Okay. You notice the difference? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, woo! <"Ooh." laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was talking about, even if I did it with a pinky, you okay, know, watch this, let's see. So say, my name is Gina. My name is Gina. Okay, push down. It's not right. Say, my name is Bob. My name is Bob. Okay. Some people are already in your mind are thinking, he's pushing hard in the second. It's okay, it's alright, it's skeptical here, right? So here we go. So um, so you have shoulder tension, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna push down, I'm gonna ask a certain question, okay? So I'm gonna say, are there trapped emotions that are contributing to your shoulder pain? Like go ahead, resist. Resist. Push up. You feel that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so her body said yes, right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an emotion push up. Okay. So uh, we're going to use an emotion code chart. Um, let's see. Does somebody like to, does anybody here like to help? Does anyone like to help at all? Or is everyone? Anybody want to? Okay. Can you come over here? Can you be my assistant? Do I need glasses? Yes. Okay. So can you see that? Oh, sweet. That's good. Okay. So what we're going to do is this is the emotion code chart. Okay. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask her questions. Specifically on shoulder tension. Now, if you can write down here her name. How do you spell it? G I N A. G I N A. And then how young are you? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Like how I asked that, right? Like yeah, 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 yeah. You guys like that, right? Yeah. All the women were smiling. You guys were like, yeah. why do you say that? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I know better. I know better. I don't want heads to roll. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to say. Um, so can we? So I'm gonna ask a simple question. Like, oh, me. I said, uh, so can we release a trapped emotion that is affecting your shoulders? So go ahead, resist your right? Resist. Pretty strong, right? Okay. So now uh, I'm gonna look up here and be like, is the trapped emotion in column B? Go ahead, resist. Is it column A? Resist. Okay, it's definitely not column A. So column B, resist. Okay, let's try again. Okay, column B. Uh, no, it's not column B. Okay. <laughs> is it column A? Or is this? Okay, try, try uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me try a base test here. Okay. Say, my name is Gina. My name is Gina. Okay, is this the end? Okay, that's what you're okay, so it is. And then let's say, uh, my name is Bob. My name is Bob. Great. So I, I, you're, you're kind of like a little less strength. We use a little less strength. Okay. So, um, so is this in, is the trapped emotion in column A? Or is this okay? No, it's not. Is it column B? Or is this? Yeah, so, so yeah, that's, that's yeah. So put column B, okay? So you get this is this is this is really cool. So can you do this by yourself? Yes, you can. Do most people want to learn muscle testing and do it themselves? No, but you can. So like, there are some people that figure this out and they do it on themselves. Me personally, even myself, I like to hire someone else to do it for me while I sit back on my couch and I go, you know, my neck, and then, and then my neck pain goes away. I'm like, no. 
I got money problem, you know, and then they work on my money problem. You know, so I'm just sitting and relaxing. I don't know about you, but uh, you can do it in sauna. You can do it wherever you want. So, and, and you can do it long distance too. So let's see. Um, so you say that's called B, right? Okay. So yeah. Okay. So now we're gonna say, um, uh, is this trapped in motion in an even room? Okay. So we're gonna resist one second. Is it even room, or is it an, an auto resisting? Yeah, so that's odd. Yeah, so it's odd. Okay, so now we single it up. So now it's either one, three, or five. Okay, you guys get that? You guys follow me? Yeah. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go. So is this in row one in a resist No, it's definitely not. See that? Is it in row three? Resist? No. Is it in row five? Yeah, see that? So B, row five. So now it's either this, that, that, or that. Now. Uh, I'm going to ask real quick which one of it. So if it could be conflict, creative insecurity, terror, unsupported, or wishy-washy. So we have no idea. I have no idea when I'm working with her. And I don't like to think it's like, she looks conflicted. I, I don't do that. I just, I, just, I, just, I, just, I, just, I just do what the body says to do, right? So I go, um, okay, so is this, so when I, when I, when I say the word, the word, then just push up, okay? okay. So, go, so is the, is the trapped emotion a conflict, okay? Yeah, it is actually. But let me see, is it? Creative insecurity? Yeah, no. Uh, is it terror? No. Uh, unsupported? No. Uh, Wishy-washy? No. Yeah, so you see it's conflict. So there must have been a moment in her life where she felt conflict. Now, when you all have felt conflict before in your life, I felt conflict. Um, so, uh, in-laws. You know, in -law. yeah. So, now the question is, is, do we need to know what age it is, right? And let's ask her body. Because sometimes the body's like, I do need to know the age. Sometimes like, no, nah, I don't care. So, I'll say, we need to know the age of this trapped emotion before we release it. So, we resist. Yeah, I was like, no, not really. Okay, so let's, so we're going to use this magnet real quick. I forgot to ask you real quick, how much is the pain here again from 1 to 10? 10 being really annoying and 1 just a little bit there. What number would you give your shoulders? I would say like more like a 5. 5? Okay, cool. 5, 6. Okay, so I'm using a magnet here. And is it on the side? On the right side? Yeah. Okay. So, right side, okay, it's so a right shoulder. Make it the right shoulder. And it's a 5, okay? And it's conflict, right? So the says we don't need to know the age. Now, um, and then you are 27. See, now here's the cool thing, is can I start muscle testing her from this area? Like she has this big, well, Dr. Brad calls it this uh, information field. So is there a way I can just tap into her right now and figure out all the trapped most I can if I want? So um, that way you can just relax, right? So I'll be like, so let me connect with you real quick. So I'll say, you know, my name is Gina. My name is Emmanuel. But I was like, nah, no, you're not. For right now, it's not. So what am I doing? It's called proxy. It means I'm putting my knee to the side, and I'm allowing, but it's almost like this cord is connected with her, and now I'm tapping to her subconscious, right? That's why it says, my name's Emmanuel, but I was like, no, you're not. Stop saying that. Okay, good. So, so it says, my name's Gina. So when did you get this conflict? What, is this 20 years old? No, less than 20, less, uh, less than 20. Is it less than 20? Or, no, less than 20, no. So it's more than 20, 21, 22, 23. So it's around 23, right? So, I tell people, like, does anything ring a bell around 23 where you felt conflict about something? Was there a relationship, work, work issue, family, like, what, anything? And it, like I said, here's a cool thing, too. It could be 22 or it could be 24, so it's kind of like around that time. Okay, cool. So what, what is uh, it? Probably the end of a relationship. Yeah, okay, yeah, watch. So now put up your arm. So um, like, go ahead, uh, resist when I tell you. So does this track promotion have anything to do with the end of a relationship? Go ahead, resist. See that? See how I did that? So what? So now we're just going to release it real quick. So if you guys look over here, all I'm really doing is I'm just using this little magnet here. Now, here's the funny thing. is like, what if you don't have this cool thing? Do you guys know you guys can go to your refrigerator magnet and use that, right? So the whole time, healing has been near the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> that little Hello Kitty thing that's just been staring at you has been able to release your depression. Okay. So we're just going to release this. So with the trap of motion, you just, you just do it three times. I'm just doing extra just because it probably feels good. <laughs> um, but um, if it's inherited, though, uh, I'll show you what happened when we get inherited. Well, someone's going to have an inherited one here. We're going to release it. Uh, so then uh, go take a deep breath in real quick. Okay? And then, uh, so now watch this. So I'm going to say, did we release that trapped emotion of conflict, right? So I want you to resist. Like, did we release that trapped emotion of conflict? What is this? You see, we did. Okay. So do a quick favor. Just go ahead and walk to the door real quick. Okay? So walk to the door. The reason why I'm telling you to walk the door is just because it just shakes up the energies a little bit. So sometimes when I do that, I'll just tell them to do that, and then, yeah, you don't have to shake. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so you can come back over here, okay? Okay. So could this be a simple situation? So, so could this be a simple situation, and it's just one trapped emotion, and, and then we're done? Could be. 
So go ahead and just kind of just check your shoulders real quick. You said it was a five. So I'm just going to see if it feels maybe just a little bit loose or a little bit lighter. Where, where is it? Right? Lighter. lighter, yeah. So, so what number would you give it right now? Like, uh, you can give me a decimal point, so drive my OCD crazy. 2.3. 2.3. Okay, okay, so 2.3, right? Okay. And then maybe you might, they might feel it if you're kind of sensitive to energy healing, you might feel more calmer, relaxed, or lighter. I feel, I feel that. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's, it, I, personally, there's one thing I'm addicted to. It's the way your body feels when you release energies. And hers, what age was it at? Uh, 23. 23. So, that was, so four years ago, your body wanted to release that. I mean, her body's like, oh, thank goodness. Hated that guy. You know, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah so, so, um, so what we can ask real quick is: is there is there another trapped emotion that may be causing the shoulder pain? Is is it possible she might have another one that's contributing to it? Right. What's that? So, let's put up your arms. Is there another trapped emotion? I want you to resist. Right? Is there another trapped emotion that may be contributing to your shoulder tension? So better resist real quick. And I said, yeah. So you feel that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but now we're going to make it a lot faster. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and do this for the rest of the lab. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're going to do this a lot faster. I'm just going to do it on my hand, okay? I'm, I'm going to figure out what it is, okay? So let's see. So is there another, so I'm going to connect with you again. Oh, it's still connected with you. Okay. So I'm going to say, um, are there any, uh, is another trapped emotion contributing to your shoulder tension body? Say yes, okay? So put column A. Uh, and then odd. Three. So. A3, okay? So is this, um, it's discouragement. So someone let her down or something let her down, right? Now, I'm gonna find out where it is. Let's see, is it a 27, man? Nah. Is it less than 27, is it 20? Is it less than 20? No, so it's more than 20. 21, 22, 23. Is it possible he let you down? Yeah, yeah. Now see, this isn't, this isn't always typical. Sometimes I might find something else around four years old, but she knows, she's like, oh, that guy discouraged me already, right. you know? So um, watch this, um, so watch this. Um, do you, remember this, okay? Um, do you have a trapped emotion of discouragement affecting your shoulder here? What is this? See it? Okay, so let's release it. All right, so, so I have the intention in my mind to release that from her. Okay, so one for the road, right? So, um, so then go ahead and put your arm up again. Okay, so did we release this trap emotion of the skirt of road resist? Yes, okay, so now go ahead and take a deep breath, okay? And then just go walk over there again. Just, you know, sashay, sashay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does it. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring you around with me. Okay, so, um, and then just go ahead and start kind of just moving your shoulders again to see if you said you said it was like a what was it? Twenty three. Yeah. So where's it right now? Like where where's your shoulder right now? Like how does it feel? It feels really good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what what numbers are you? Um, I want to say zero. Okay. Sweet. Zero point three. Zero point three. So that <laughs> See, she's smiling more, right? She's a lot happier. And hopefully, like, she's gonna get another feeling of calmness again. Nice. And so feel good. Yeah, no, I'm no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of yeah. way. Yeah, okay, okay. So, um, let's give a round of applause, yeah? <laughs> so, so, again, um, I've seen uh, Dr. Brad, he took me to, um, he flew me in his plane, I felt a little, a little special, but it wasn't a jet plane, it was this really small plane, and I was just like, oh my god, I'm going to die. And then I'm like, I had to work on myself so I don't have fear of flying, like, you know? And so, what's interesting is he took me to, um, to uh, Arizona, for a addiction center for Native American Indians. And before my very eyes, I saw people that had pain 10, 15 years, headaches for 15 years, 20 years, and like before my eyes, just seeing them go like, no head pain, like what? Okay, but you know? And it was very, very powerful. Um, and uh, Dr. Brad is, um, he has this calling in his mind right now that he believes that you know, Native Americans have suffered you know, in this country. And so he has this thing where he's just like, uh, for some reason, their spirits are so responsive to this work that it might just be literally one inherited emotion, and then boom, their shoulder pain goes from an eight to a zero. They're like, I've never seen such receptive humans in this world. And these people just lose it in one trapped emotion. So there's something going on with those beautiful people over there. So let's um, let's keep going here. Let's. Um, so. Where are my keys? Okay. So. Okay. All right. So. I just got this clicker today. 140 bucks. What the hell? It's not right. 
Apple's not mad. All right, so um, knows what you need. Okay, so my next client had chronic debilitating low back pain, very low energy levels. Tracked the motions from 17 years ago with a root cause. She practically danced out of my office with tears in her eyes. So lie detector. Subconscious knows the difference between yes and no, truth and lies. So it's great. I mean, um, some of you guys have read Power versus Force. Have you read that book? Yeah, it talks about like how government and society would be different if politicians were muscle testing. You know, it'd be very, very, a very different society, right? Because they would be like, yeah, that campaign's not real at all. Like, you know? And so um, it'd be a different world. If judges did it, if lawyers did it, muscle testing, everyone's muscle testing, uh, a lot of people would be exposed. So um, so we, we, did a, we did this, this basically, we did a release, right? So I wanted to tell you, uh, Chia, please. Talk about that, okay. So um, you want to make sure you're very well hydrated when you're doing this. So, and and there's, a, there's a moment when you do this that uh, you might be processing. So processing uh, is when your body's healing from this, right? Sometimes it takes two or three days, right? So here's my little tips here. And, uh, um, the tips are this, is drink lots of water, two or three days you're processing, stay away from negative people, and stay away from negative news. Why would you want to stay away from that? Because you don't want to get this thing called an echo. And this really simple. All it is is just like something that triggers you. You're like, man, I just released worry. Maybe not a good idea to hang out with a friend who's worrying about her ex-boyfriend is cheating on her. Probably not the best person to hang out with when you just released the worry from you. You see? So that doesn't mean that you're gonna go backwards in healing. It just means that they might trigger you. That's all. And then all of a sudden you're worrying about it. You're like, whoa, what's going on? And what I tell myself is like, okay, I'm just processing. Cool, you know? So, but then imagine if every single day from that day, your work, the, the time span of your worry gets less and less and less. And the next time you worry at work, you feel instead of two hours, you feel it for just two minutes and then boom, it just leaves your body. Again, how much more productive would, would you be, right? So, uh, so bit of demo, so I'm already ahead. I'm already ahead. <laughs> okay, so begin to, so continues for what, yeah, so technically you're still healing for the next three days, okay? So I was just saying, all those little tips I was telling you, just do those things, okay? So no CNN, okay? no, no negative news, right? And um, so we're gonna talk about the heart wall, okay? Now, uh, how many of you guys would be interested in listening to the greatest discovery in energy healing history? How many of you guys? I'm being very serious. Some of you guys think, like, come on. I see, you know what's so funny is like, I said the same thing. When I was sitting in this carpet, uh, I was telling him, like, you know, when you were talking about the heart while saying the greatest discovery of energy healing, because I was talking, it's crazy, right? You're like, the greatest discovery of energy healing, of course it's the greatest discovery because you discovered it. I said, like, I'm going to discover something and then I'm going to call it the greatest discovery, you know? So like, he was looking at me like I was crazy. He's like, this guy. Um, but we keep up very best friends, that's how we talk, right? And um, how many of you guys honestly have felt um, when emotional stuff is happening, you feel like your heart's tense or it feels heavy or it feels like it's gonna break. Anybody feel that? Yeah, it's real. So do you guys know that you guys are one step closer to what they call BHS, which stands for broken heart syndrome. Broken heart syndrome. So what's happening inside your heart? The, 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 tendons, um, the tendons inside your heart are being stretched. They're just stretching. And so your heart's feeling this pain, but then no one knows why the heart stops hurting all of a sudden. No one knows. So Dr. Brad's wife has a case of depression, and she also had PTSD, right? Dr. Brad's wife. She has this amazing dream. And Dr. Brad, being a spiritual person that he is, it's kind of amazing. The guy prays every time before he works with anybody. Of course the emotion code's gonna show up to him, right? He's just a guy who's just always looking up, and I'm like, what do I do now? What do I do now? He's just that guy. And he kind of has this engineer, chiropractic mind, so he's going like, why is that? Then why is that? Why is that? And I'm gonna tell you guys, why that mind was perfect to bring in the system called the body code, all y'all are gonna flip out. When I start talking about, how many of you guys have seen the movie Limitless? You guys seen the movie Limitless? Okay, cool movie, but what's the sad part about it is that the dude had some major side effects. Can we all agree? And then the whole time going like, oh, what's he gonna do next? And like, it just starts getting worse and worse and worse. There's no side effects to the body code. Just becoming a better person. Who's okay with becoming a better person? Okay, yeah. So, and for those, I know there's one person here who's, Cross eyed, cross arms, cross legs, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I'm talking to you, bro, okay? I'm talking to you. There's a reason why you're in this room, okay? So just be open minded. So she, she had this dream, and all of a sudden, um, he starts coming up to her and goes, like, What's this dream about? And he starts decoding it, right? 
And then he's like, he, he goes, he's like, I need to go back to my office, you know? So he goes back to his office. You guys are not going to believe this, but he goes back to his office and a vision opens up to him. And he sees the floor, similar to this, a wooden floor, actually. Uh, it, it's changed, like his, this floor is changing, this beautiful wooden floor. And, and he, he makes fun of it because he's like, guys, I don't do drugs. I'm just a teetotaler, you know, it sounds fine. So he sees this floor and he keeps hearing this voice say to him that your wife's heart is underneath that floor. So then he goes back to his wife and he goes, honey, I had this vision, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So he says, let me muscle test you real quick. So then for the first time ever in history, he muscle tests someone. And guess what he says? He says, is this a, do you have a hard floor? No. Do you have a hard wall? And for the first time ever in global history, you guys don't get it. First time in global history, the body said yes to a hard wall. And then he says, is there an age when you created this hard wall? I guess the body said, yes, there is an age. When did you create this? This is older than, I think, I don't know, maybe she was 50. Jean, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry, but you look a lot younger, you're like 30. So um, she said, you know, what age you get it? So she started to muscle testing at age two. So age two, you received the hard wall. So then he's like, okay. And then she confessed to him and said, you know, that makes a lot of sense. My mother was emotionally abused by my father, and he was a rageaholic. And my whole childhood is him yelling at us all the time. And so guess what she had? Depression. Guess what she had? PTSD, right? How many of you guys know someone who had a very, very toxic childhood? Anyone? So here's the, here's the thing, is she's developing these heart walls, and she's getting these five symptoms to get worse and worse and worse. So, the heart is the second brain. Heartbreak is very dangerous. So it's literally like a bomb shelter. Like it's, it's, it's there to protect you. So what your, what your body is doing, he found out, is that your body is taking trapped emotions and placing it over the heart. So this is the crazy part. Your body is so, into, I mean, do you guys, how many of you guys honestly believe that your body is the most amazing system on the planet? How many of you guys really believe Okay, so you guys do believe that. You know why? Because it's true, okay? The subconscious, like while we're all hanging out here, your body probably did a trillion things at the same time while your conscious brain is like, should I watch the rerun on that Netflix? You know, we're thinking about three or four things. Your subconscious did like 80 million things at the same time. That's right, cells go this way. Dr. Wright even said it this way. He said, a cell is like a cargo ship with like 80 employees in there. That's how complicated just a cell is, right? And would it really be that crazy if your body was taking a trapped emotion that you're experiencing? Let's say, let's say this was my mother, let's just say, right? She's, she's being very aggressive with me, right? So what do I feel? I feel panic. My body will find a panic trapped emotion down here and place it over the heart. And now she's, I have a panic wall over my heart, okay? Let's say like, um, you know, my auntie, she gets upset at me, and I start getting depressed, so depressed it starts affecting my heart. But I was like, don't worry, I got you. I don't want your heart to break. It places a depressed trapped emotion over the heart. And as you start building your heart wall, these five symptoms start showing up. Okay, we're about to get... Do you, okay, do you guys want me to filter myself, or can I get real with you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real? Okay. 93% of you guys have a heart wall. 93%. Here are the five symptoms. You guys ready? Some of you guys have a pen and paper. I'll write this darn thing down. Because this is the thing that's holding you guys back. Okay, here's number one. Number one, low immune system, low energy. How many of you guys would be open to have more energy throughout the day? How many guys? Perfect, right. Um, number two, lack of clarity of your mission in life. How many of you guys have thought, there's, I feel like there's something else in life that I should be. How many of you guys? Okay. Now, the other people that did raise their hands, that's cool, but maybe it's mentally confirmed, but not confirmed with your heart. So you're, you're, you're meant to, this, I'm a real estate agent, this is what I was born to do, but then your heart isn't connected with you yet, so then you're not feeling that happiness, joy, and elation you should be feeling if you didn't have a bomb shelter over your heart. Make sense? That's the second one. The third one is, when people give you, how many of you guys have dated someone, and then you start feeling that they start giving you love and affection, you're like, See him giving me love and affection, but I just don't feel it today. How many of you guys have felt that? Like maybe there's something wrong with our relationship. You guys are sitting next to him, that's why you guys are raising your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're saying, like, for some reason, I just don't feel that much love. I see, I see it, but I'm not getting affected by it. My heart isn't full. Third one, right? 
By the way, divorce rates at 60%, so a lot of people are not getting full. The fourth one is your love language gets twisted. So how many of you guys, raise your hand, be honest here, how many of you guys have said something to your partner, and when you said it, they go like, why would you say that? You're like, what? I thought it was a good idea. Like, you're being rude. I'm not being rude. How many of you guys have ever been in that situation where you're like, for some reason, you, this is the sad part about this whole thing, you actually said it out of the goodness of your freaking heart. <laughs> but then that woman, for some reason, goes like, ugh, you know, it's like, dude. It's like, and then what do we say? You got issues, right? She's got issues, right? I'm here to tell you guys, but to be raw with you guys, your heart has issues. Your heart has issues. And, and Dr. Brad said it this way. He says, it's like a beautiful butterfly coming out of the heart and it has to go through depression, anger, panic. Um, all these different emotions that we saw up there in the chart. Shock, um, love unreceived. Oof, putting love out there doesn't come back to you. That's an actual emotion, love unreceived. What about how many of you guys put effort into something that doesn't come back to you the way it does oh, it? That's called effort unreceived, okay? So, so we're going through this, right? And uh, by the end of this, the, guess what happens to this butterfly by the end of all these walls? It's a strange looking, you know, it's like a, it's like a bat or something, you know? And, and, uh, and it's not the beautiful butterfly that it was before. That's why relationships don't work. That's why we're able to come together. It's like, hey, how are you? It's like, how about we, we start fresh? How about we do that? And what the girl doesn't see with my glasses that I have that don't exist is that she doesn't see this guy have a huge wall in front of him. And then she comes with her wall too. You try to put two people with walls, see if they can even hug each other. <laughs> they can't. Or what if someone tries to give you money and you have a wall and then I'm pressed up against her chest and I'm like, I can't grab the cash. So the, the, the fifth thing, guys, the fifth thing is abundance and wealth. It actually prevents you from having abundance and wealth. You're like, man, I've been trying everything and I can't get ahead in life. Okay, so so he just, we just did a baseline test. He's testable. So there's nothing wrong with his match. He's, he's high grade everything. So um, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, do you have a hard wall? And I want you to resist, okay? So okay, I'm going to so ask the question and I want you to resist. Okay, okay. okay. So do you have a hard wall that resists? See that strong? Yeah. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna say uh, the next question. Put it again. I'm gonna say, can we release a heart wall emotionally now? Go ahead and resist real quick. Yeah, we can. So now we're gonna find out uh, what it is real quick. So let's uh, let's put on the. Now you guys might ask, how long does it take to release all the trauma? Well, the reality is sometimes it takes three sessions, four sessions, six sessions. I don't know, you know. Um, I usually provide like a six session thing, and then I go, if we clear your heart wall on four, I'll give you some body code sessions. How would you like to be more open to love? And the person's like, I'm open. Okay, great. So, um, so we don't know. We don't know how much trauma he's dealt with in his life, but he just says that he has this one moment, right? Now, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask, okay, do you have that moment in your mind real quick? So I'm, I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do two things with him, okay? One is I'm going to release a random heart wall, just from somewhere in your life, and you might tell me, like, oh, that was a pretty messed up life. Not, not that situation, but it's something messed up, right? Okay. The second one I'm going to do is I want to find out how much peace he has, okay? So, um, here, take a seat just super fast, real quick, just, just right away. See? Yeah, take a seat super fast. They don't have me up here yet, so yeah. I'm going to keep that like, bothering you. So, the first thing is, so if you guys, uh, there, so remember how I was telling you about the limitless pill, right? So, this is how it works. Dr. Brad said something on stage that kind of, uh, oh, I don't know, just like, blew my mind. He said something like, everything that's wrong with your life is just an energetic misalignment. Mm. Okay, I'll say it again. Everything that's wrong with your life is just an energetic misalignment. So you know me, I'm like, you know, the son of two doctors, like, everything, come on. You know? And then, um, but I also had 12 secretaries taking notes from me, though. so, so like, you know, I had my back, you know. So I was like, uh, wait, everything? Then he starts saying this. How many of you guys have fear of public speaking on stage? Go ahead and raise your hand. Go ahead. How many of you guys have fear of going up on here? Please be honest, yeah. Um, how many of you guys have fear of raising up your hand no matter what I say? <laughs> Y'all are, are getting kind of tired over here. I'm going to wake you up, okay? So, some of you guys have um, fear of going into another relationship. And maybe you guys don't even know it. But let's say, for example, you're like, I want to travel the world, Emmanuel. But you know what? I wish I could learn languages faster. How many of you guys like to learn languages faster? Okay, how many of you guys are entrepreneurs? Any entrepreneurs in here? Okay, how many of you guys would like someone said this? Um, <laughs> we gotta work on that. That's an imbalance. Uh, so, uh, so another one would be like, for example, um, you know, I have full confidence in sharing uh, my business opportunity. Or some people are scared of sharing their business opportunity. Oh, oh yeah, because uh, they're scared of being what? In the NFL club, no friends left club. 
you know? And so uh, I can, so, so what he's saying, he's saying like, okay, you have these imbalances, you can actually muscle test how much the body believes in a certain affirmation statement. So let, let's switch it around. Let's say like I have fear, I have something to provide, some product, but I'm scared to go on YouTube to like display information on my product. A lot of, me have a lot of friends who they're selling products, they're like, mm, YouTube, Facebook Live, boom, you know? What if we said this statement like, I'm very confident when I do Facebook Live videos. That's the flip side, right? But now here's the question, I can muscle test them to see how much their body believes it. So instead of just getting yes or no answers, Dr. Brad says it goes way deeper than that. It goes percentages, not even just percentages, it goes decimal points. I work with someone, I'm like, <clears throat> this, this girl with a, and, uh, some uh, oil company, uh, like, some like doTERRA company, I was like, how much, how much money would you like to make? $10,000, okay, how much hours would you want to put into it? This much hours, and then like, and uh, what do you want to preserve no matter what? Family, time with my son, okay? Let's see how aligned you are with that. You see, and then I muscle test, and guess where she went? 8%. And she got so sad. She was like, oh, 8%? Come up. And I'm just like, I don't care if it's 8%. I don't care if it's 2%. Mm -hmm. The point is you have a system in front of you that gets you to 100%. Mm -hmm. And she's like, that's true. I'm like, okay, so let's work on that. I started removing a ton of money trauma. This girl had money trauma. <laughs> and I was releasing and we went, and guess what? We went all the way up to 80-ish 80, 80 percent. I think it was like 84%. And mind you, she disappeared. Like, I didn't hear from her for a while. She's like, down. And I like, wanted her to hear, like, hey, what happened to you, you know? But she took off, and she would just drop us like, hey, man, I love you, I love your work, blah, blah, And she just take off again. I'm like, dude, what is up with this, you know? She did that for, like, four months. Then I, uh, she finally messaged me back, and she was like, thanks for being patient, though. You're, you're, you're coming up, trust me. Oh, yeah. Uh, so um, so she, she uh, uh, got up to 84%. We left it there, right? She came back, and she's like, man, I totally believe in your work. We should totally get to 84% and move it to 100%. I'm like, where have you been? You know? She's like, I know it sounds totally crazy. I'm like, just bring it. She's like, I've made $24,000 in the last three months. Nice. She was making $1,000 to $2,000, and all of a sudden she made $24,000. She's, like, she's like, did you see my Facebook? I'm like, yeah, you're moving to Florida. She's like, oh, we just, we just got a new home in, in Florida. It's like, so amazing. And then when that happened, I was like, wait a minute. And I started helping hairstylists. They're like, man, you know, I'm only making 200, 300 uh, a week. I'm like, well, how much do you want to make? So I'm like, 4,000. Okay, great. So I did that, 4,000. How much time do you want to put into it? And I'm like, how much do you want to preserve? Eh, you're like 37%. And then again, they do the whole. <laughs> I'm like, don't care. I don't care. If it's, I don't care if it's negative 2%. Let's just move it. Guess what? So I'm just like, man, uh, $4,500 a month, and I barely post on Instagram, but the customers just keep coming. I'm like, that's a good problem. She's like, you know what I should have done? This is what they always said. No, I should have, I should have done 8,000. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know what's cool is, um, I go, don't do 8,000 dollars. Just do 4,000. Get excited about 4,000. Be grateful for where you're at. Let's do 8,000 afterwards, you know? And so that, that's something that's the fire now with you. I also want to make more money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, so, um, Okay, so, um, so we're going to do a baseline test again. So say, my name is Jake. My name is Jake. Can you go push up? Can you go push up? Jake, there you go. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, say, my name is Bob. My name is Bob. Yeah, yeah it's a sweet right? Okay, so um, how old are you? 48. 48, okay, so I'm 48 years old. I'm 48 years old. Yeah. Okay. Right? So say, I'm 22. I'm 22. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, so watch this. Um, uh, Think about that trauma, okay? From right in my, okay, so, so, do you have complete peace with that trauma? Go ahead, resist. Yes, so says no. Watch this. It's interesting. Um, with, let's say I have complete peace with that trauma. How energetically aligned are you with that? Are you more than ninety percent? Go ahead, resist. Yeah. Says no. See? Now watch. Is it less than ninety percent? Resist. <laughs> See? Less than seventy percent? Resist. Yep. Less than 40% resist. Less than 20% resist. Less than 10% resist. Less than 5% resist. Less than 4, 3, 2, no, yeah. So is it 2%? 2%. Two percent. Two percent. See, he has 2% peace. Whatever, whatever happened at that moment. So then what I would do with him is I'd be like, we're not leaving you. And what I would do is I would say, let's go in there and find out what's, what's, what's going on and blah, blah, blah. And um, 
So that would be in the body code. So let me show you guys real quick how the body code works. We've got 15 minutes here, so I'm gonna try to make this juicy for you guys, okay? So that had to work because I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's, like, it's like I paid him to do that, not really. Uh, okay. So um, so do you mind if I uh, um, uh, let's do this. Let's uh, let's do this. Yeah, let's just do it live in February. So when I when I tell you which one to go to, can you just click on it? Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. Okay. So here's the funny part. Does he know the system? No. No. So how does he know what I'm about to do with him? Well, it's so the subconscious. Now, Dr. Brad used to be really cool about it. And he would say, uh, you know, his subconscious just sees everything. But then I also saw another seminar where he says that inside his system is built a body code system. I like the second answer better, but uh, basically we all have a body code system inside of us already. Kind of like a car that we have all like gauges, you know, that thinks something's off, whatever. It's like we're all built in with it. Like he just knows the emotion for chart. That's why when I said, do you have a heart wall? He's like, what the, you know? So he knows a heart wall. So I'm going to say, with this trauma, uh, let's see, um, is there something that we can release from there? So it's not, you're at 2% for it. Sorry. Well, so with, with this trauma, if we want to release the biggest thing that, that is affecting with this trauma, um, is it something I'm going to say, like, I'm looking at it. So is it something on the right side that we have to release? Okay, do we to this? Yeah, why is this now? Uh, is it something on the left hand side? Is this? Yeah. Okay, is it, is it toxins? No. Is it circuits and systems? No. Is it energies? Yeah, so it's energy, right? So go ahead and click on energies. Go ahead and go back a little bit. There you go. Okay. Add that in. Okay, so um, so let's do this again. So, <clears throat> is this something on the on the right hand side of the chart? No, it's not. Is this something uh, is on the left side? Uh, yeah, it is. Feel that? So, is, is it something mental? Okay, is this? No, it's not. Uh, is something offensive? No, it's not. Is something post traumatic? Is this post traumatic? See, go back to that. By the way. Most of the PTSD veterans that I work with, this is where I go flying to. I go straight to psychic trauma. And what, what is a psychic trauma? Psychic trauma is when you feel three emotions at the same time. Okay, so like you feel like anger, frustration, resentment, and then it gets stuck literally in one energy in the body. What does that do? It causes you to feel worry and anxiousness about that certain subject. For example, if you see here, it becomes like, uh, actually, Actually, wait, you don't even know what it is. It's, it's, see, I'm not going to jump ahead. I'm <laughs> guessing it's psychic trauma, but it could be any. So let's check, okay? All right. Let's go. He works out to me, right? Um, so is this something on the, on the right-hand side? Something on the left-hand side? Yeah, it is. Is it a physical trauma? No, it's not. Is it a psychic trauma? Is this? Yeah, see, it is. Yeah, so it's, it's a psychic trauma. And so, okay, now... Just give them a round of applause, real quick. Okay. okay. Just to make things, okay, I'm, I'm going to do my favorite because he was such a champ sitting down there. I'm, I was in most people on stage. Then I'll go, yeah, let's go release a psych trap. Why would they want to do it? Well, because it's I have to find three trapped emotions first. But because I'm cool like that, and because we're going to be friends later on, uh, I'm going to go find these trapped emotions, and then I'm just going to release it from him. And he's probably going to resonate with it. I'm like, yeah, actually, I did feel those three emotions, you know. And then I'm going to release it, I'm going to put it in this bag, and then I'm going to check his percentage again. So watch this. This will be the, the final example here. So, so let's see. So, okay, so my name is Jake. Okay, so let's see. Um, so do you have a psychic trauma? Yeah. So how many trapped emotions are in the psychic traumas? One, 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 two, one, three. Yeah, so there's, there's three of them in this. Just put like one, two, three. So it's called A. Discouragement, someone or something letting you down, right? Is there another one here? Yeah. Okay, B, but B. Odd. Self abuse. So, so there's two so far. He's got discouragement, someone's letting him down, okay? And the second one is that he's starting to get hard, he's hard on himself about something. What age were you in this happened? 15. 15? Yeah. And what's the third one here? Let's see. It's a 
call on its A. Even. So he knows what that's about, but there was just a moment, a day, a night, where he felt all three of those at the same time, right? So, so then, um, so watch. So now what we're going to do is we're going to release uh, that one. Where's the magnet? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, so let's stand up real quick. Okay. So, um, there's the picture. So, we said, do you have a psychic trauma that includes discouragement, self-abuse, and overwhelm? Go ahead with this real quick. That's it. Dude, that one was really strong. <laughs> okay, so then uh, we're just going to release this real quick, okay? We're just going to release this. Okay, so it's just three, but I'm going to give the next ones because it probably worked out. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to put So this is, um, was that psychic trauma released from you now? Go ahead, is this? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's strong, right? So, so we released it from him, right? And so I'm um, going to take a deep breath in real quick. So now watch this. Now the question is, did the percentage move? Not right? So let's see. Um, so, what is this? so think about that, that moment that happened, right? So I have complete peace with that moment. How energetically aligned are you with that? Are you now at 2%? Go ahead, is this? Let's see. How does it move? So is it, is it more than 2%? Is this? More than 5%? Is this? Mm. Okay. Is it 5%? Yeah. You just, you just went a little bit. You went 5%. So yeah, so, so, so like I said, there's more stuff going on. Like this, this wasn't a lot of little, he brought up something that was pretty heavy, I would say. And so we have to you know, move up to 100%. So is it possible that he can have peace with that? Now here's a crazier part, watch this. Put up your arm real quick. Um, if we cleared your heart wall, okay? If we remove trauma from his heart, as a byproduct, probably we're gonna take that moment at 15, because there's probably a couple layers at 15. How many of you guys would agree there's probably some layers at 15? Yeah, right? right. You know I'm saying? So if we cleared your heart wall, would you still be at 5%? So go ahead and resist. Why is this no, right? Because is, is it more than 5%? More than 5%? Yeah. Okay. So it's more than 10% resist. More than 20% resist. More than 30% resist. More than 30%? Mm -hmm. Is that more than 30%? Uh, more than 40%? Yeah, definitely not, right? No? I guess that's a no. That's a no, yeah. <laughs> Less than 40%? Go ahead and resist. There it is. That, that's definitely strong. Yeah, less than percent, less than thirty percent. This was it thirty percent? No, it's more than thirty percent. So I'm very OCD about this, guys. Uh, it's more than thirty-five percent. No. So it's less than thirty-five. Yeah, thirty-four. No, thirty-three. Thirty-three. So, so just clearing heart wall trauma, thirty-three percent. So then what do I have to do? I have to go back to the body code. Be like, okay, there's more stuff in here, and it could be anything. It could be I mean, you name it. Uh, could be uh, this emotion. Do you guys know that when you have? Uh, um, sit down. Say thank, thank you, good. So, do you guys know that when you guys get a, a, let's say you have a very emotional moment, that at the end of it, there's a, it's almost like you hit a bell, bing, and there's this ringing energy that comes out. And I've seen a lot of people who have pain. Those of you guys who raise your hand, like have shoulder pain, in fact, probably gonna find this. An emotional event happened, and at the end, there's this ring energy, it just rings off. And uh, I'll find three or four of those, and I'll like, hey, my neck pain's gone away, right? He might have that in his body. Guys, I don't, I don't mean to make you guys all excited, but there's 200 hyperlinks in here. It's like a whole like, planetary system out there of energies that we're not aware of, but guess what? Are holding us what? Back. They're holding us back, guys. So, um, who here, let's see how much time, I want to do something cool too. Oh, we only got like three minutes left. Okay, <laughs> all right, so, um, how many of you guys are looking for love, but are not finding it, or having issues finding love? Just go ahead and raise your hands. Okay. You've been, you've been really consistent. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's bring her. I'm a mess. <laughs> Let's see how, let's test I'm a mess and see how it pauses. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Crystal. Crystal? Yes. Oh, cool. 
Uh, okay, so we're going to Crystal. Okay. And how young are you? Forty-four. Forty-four. Thank you. Okay. So, <laughs> Crystal, forty-four. So, um, so let's do a baseline test first. Okay. So let's put this out here. Okay. So we're just gonna. Um, I'm gonna push down. Or else I'm not gonna push down too far. I'm just gonna push down. And just and you want to resist. This is a bad shoulder too. Oh, but no. it's a strong arm. Okay. So I don't want to hurt it. Though. It's okay. You sure? Yes. Okay. All right, so I'm going to say, for example, um, okay, my name is Crystal. My name is Crystal. And then I want you to resist, push up. Okay, so we say, my name is Crystal. Resist. Uh, there we go, it's pretty strong, right? Say, my name is Bob. My name is Bob. Resist. I have to punch and beat away. Yes. Is that what's going on, right? Okay, so we did business. So she's good. So she's uh, no misalignments, no dehydration. She's good. So um, watch this. I'm going to I'm gonna say a statement, okay? And I want you to repeat after me, okay? Watch this. Look, look at the statement, what I said. This is really interesting. Say it is, um, <clears throat> Uh, I feel safe having a loving relationship. I feel safe having a loving relationship. Okay, I, I feel safe having a loving relationship. Do this. You see that? No. Uh, let's try something else. How's the money? I didn't tell you that. I know. <laughs> this, this is important, guys. This is important because maybe she's doing all the right things, but her body's not sending out the right messages. So. What about this? Um, how's the money going? Are you, are, you, are you rocking and rolling, like going on a red carpet? Or you, no. You, okay. <laughs> just, just ask me, just ask me. You never know. She'll be like, I'm a billionaire. You, know, you never no. know. Okay. So, um, watch this. Uh, do, I feel, do I feel safe, to say this, do I feel safe with financial abundance? Right. So go ahead, go ahead and say it. Do yeah, I feel safe? Yeah, go say it. I feel safe. I feel safe with financial abundance. Yeah, so, so here's the interesting thing is, is um, her body will sit there. She's not open, right? Now, where oh, I'm, I'm open. I know, I know, I know. You're, 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 okay. no, no, she's consciously open, yeah. but subconsciously is like, eh. Uh -huh. So what's going on with her past? There's trauma. There's relationship trauma and there's money trauma. That's all. So then I would, I would, I would ask real quick, um, you know, how, um, let's see. Uh, so I would release. I would, I would, let's release one thing from her. You guys open the free to release one thing from her. So she's going, So which, which one? Which one do you want to? Money. Okay, money. Money. Show me the money. Ask the girl. Okay. Yeah. So so let, let's find out. Let's see why she's not open to money. So um, so I'd like to. Okay. So let's do this. Um, Okay, so I'd like to release uh, something that is an imbalance that's holding her back in regards to feeling safe with money. Okay, so uh, let's release the biggest thing we can find. Okay, so let's see something on the. So I want you to resist every time I say like play, play, then you just hold up. Okay, so it's something on the right hand side. Go ahead, resist. Something on the left hand side. Okay, so this, this, okay, so the right hand side. Okay, in uh, is it something in pathogens? The ice is no. Is it something in misalignments? Yeah. Something in nutrition and lifestyle? No. So it's something in misalignments. No. Wait, wait, is it something in misalignments? Yeah, so it's something in misalignments. So here's the question. You guys are like, what the heck does a misalignment have anything to do with this? Does it take energy to make money? Yeah. Could her body be like, there's a bone, uh, let's say C1 atlas that causes her insomnia and she doesn't sleep well and she needs to get that fixed so that she can have you well rested to make what? Money. Money, yeah. So, uh, but, but I see, don't sleep the whole night through. Okay, go. Cool. Yeah, so I'll just guess. But um, <laughs> but see, the body is basically like there's some bone that needs to be aligned, right? So this is the holistic approach is, Dr. Brad says, you want to take the holistic approach of anything can cause anything. So some people think, oh yeah, my headache, it's got to be because I didn't have it's probably because I had gluten today, you know? Could be. Or it could be an acupuncture point, like a meridian that's off. And how, how would you have known that? Or maybe it's, um, you have a, a fungal infection. You, you just never know. And that's why I love this. I mean, I'm just, all day I'm working with people and I'm like, she's like, I have this because of this. I'm like, da, da, da. I'm like let's just find the symptom and let me just see where we go. And I go, oh look. She, she says, for some reason I have a client here, that her friend, she was, uh, it's interesting, she's like, I have, anxiety, I don't know why, and I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, oh, it's probably trauma or whatever, you know? And she's like, yeah, and I have gases and bloating and just brain fog all the time and cravings for sugar and, I, you know, like, I keep getting skin issues, blah, blah, blah. Guess where we went and we ended up? Fungal infection. She had a fungal infection. Her body saw it, 
And then I'm like, okay, we have to get Tyrite Chi for you. Like I muscle test. I'm like, do you need some type of like uh, remedy at all? And I said, like, lean leaf, no. coconut oil, no. Oh, Tyrite Chi. So you have to order Tyrite Chi. How many Tyrite Chi's do you need? Like, need two? Okay, so two, then you need four, the other one, the little, little squirt bottle. Okay, great. And then um, how long should you take it for? Oh, you should take it for 21 days. Can your body know exactly how much you need? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is really cool. Like, I love this body coat system because it, I can tell someone, like, this is how much you need, this is what you need, how, how long you need to take it for. It's just, it's, it's really systematized and the body knows best. So let's let's look at something from it. So there's some type of misalignment. So just to kind of just wrap up. Okay. Just for the, the time's sake, because it's it's almost time. Uh, I'm gonna ask real quick. Um, let's see. Is there uh, is it something on the left? So I'm gonna connect with you real quick. So my name's Crystal. So it's something on the left hand side, on the right side. It's the left side. Is it connected? No glands. No organs. So it's actually in the systems. So it's something in the systems here. Okay. All right, so on the left side, so the right side, left side, unitary. So her urinary system, okay? It's on the left side, no, something on the right side. So kidneys, okay? Do um, you sometimes have discomfort in your lower back sometimes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, um, uh, do, you, do you feel like you have fatigue throughout the day sometimes? Do you have fatigue? Um, only if I work too long. Work too long, okay. Yeah, so something is going on with her kidneys. And, and what's interesting with kidneys is, um, you know, I'm gonna ask for example, is your right one, it's, it's funny, like organs can be happy or unhappy. So I'll be like, is your right organ, um, is your right organ happy, or is your right kidney happy? But I said, yeah, so your right organs, your right kidney is good. Then I go, what about your left one though? No, that's not good. So what's interesting, the right one stands for reserved. If the kidney, you know, so the right one's reserved, the left one goes out first, so like, like a fuse, like, and then the right one's like, I got you, I got you, you know? But sometimes when it's really bad, the left and right go out. But hers, her body's like, the right one's good, the left one's, you know? And so I'll be like, what's, what's causing that? You know, so I'm like, is your, is your left kidney happy? I was like, no. So then we go, all right, so what is it? So your right side, left side, toxins. No, so it's something, some type of toxin. So she has excesses of something. Uh, is this on the left side, the right side? Is this uh, metabolic waste? No, it's some sort of stress hormone. So do you have excess toxic adrenaline in your body? No. She has excess toxic cortisol in her body. See, so she's going through a lot of stress, you know, or whatever. But there's some cortisol in her body. So if we were to stand up real quick, and uh, see. so do you have excess uh, toxic adrenaline in your body? What is this? Do you have excess toxic cortisol in your body? What is this? You see, it's a very strong, right? So then I'm just going to release it from her. Is it possible to release cortisol or drug from the body? Here's a crazy thing. Um, your bone, right? What At the end of the day, what is a bone? Like, what is the base of a bone? What is it? Like, if you get down all the way to the cellular level, what is it? It's energy. It's energy, right? Yeah, it's energy. Uh, her organs, energy. Even, what about parasites in the body? What, what, at the end of the day, what is a parasite? Energy. You guys get this? You can release things energetically. But the body might need something else, right? So we're just gonna release this um, over here, this excess, excess toxic cortisol. Okay, so one for the road. Okay, take a deep breath. Okay, cool. So go ahead and uh, raise your hand. So I'm gonna say, did we release that excess toxic cortisol for the body? What is this? Okay. Yeah, so you're very strong, see that? Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so she's like, she's like, hey, wait, where's the money at? Okay. <laughs> um, hold on. Her body took me there because for some reason, so we'll have to, if we ever work again, we would work to get the kidneys happy so she has more energy throughout the day, she can sleep better, blah, blah, blah. But for some reason, the body's so intelligent, it's like, dude, before the emotions, it's like, let me get you prepared that your body has the energy to make the money. Now, for those of you who do make good money, y'all know how much energy you need to, you know, you have to put energy into it, right? That's it, you know? So, I just want to end with this, is that um, I've been very, very fortunate to, to know this type of work. Do you guys want to know how many practitioners are in the world? It's only 4,000. That's it. Um, how many body code and emotion code practitioners? So, like, kind of like, uh, know just more than the chart, but can, like, understand the system. It's only 800 of us. 800. But I'm telling you, there's going to be a, a tipping point coming soon. Why? Because we're sick and tired of being sick and sick and tired of so many different things. Number one, taking too much medication. How many children do you know that are under depression pills? That's got to go. Uh, how many people, uh, adults, are dealing with their pain with, with pills? Wow. Uh, how many people have addictions? How many people are dealing with 
with, uh, I met a lady who had a fibromyalgia pain. I'll share this last story. Fibromyalgia pain on her whole right side of her body, right? I started working with her, and I'm like muscle testing around, and um, we got the first session, we got to, we went from a nine pain to her right side to a eight pain, right? And some of you guys are like, that's not a lot, but I'm excited. You know why? Because it went down one notch. So what is the body doing? The body's going, let me give you these energies that you need to release, but there's more to come. So it's like a Pez dispenser. Your body like works by layers of healing. So it just goes, this is what you need first, right? And I had to kind of reassure the girl. I was like, hey, hey, you know, calm down. We're going to keep working on it. We'll see what happens, right? The second time, guess what we did? Went from eight to seven, you know? I'm like, so excited. I'm like, yes, we went to seven, you know? And she's just like, we just went down two notches in two sessions, you know? I'm like, it's coming. Watch. It's like a combination one. Right? Once it clicks, the ball opens up. The third time, guess what I found? This is really interesting. I found a spirit physical disconnection. What does that mean? Your spirit and body are communicating back and forth all the time. There's also one in here called out of body, like where spirits out of the body. Why does that happen? Trauma, car accident. If you've been in a car accident and you're having pain somewhere, your spirit might be literally out of your body. Like Dr. Brad went to a hospital once for the guy, he went to the emergency room and he saw a guy, like he visually saw like 95% of someone's spirit outside their body. And the doctor said, like I got into a car accident. He's just like, whoa. He had to experience it and see it himself. Is Dr. Brad a visionary? Oh yeah, he's a visionary. And he, he, so I worked with her and I said, you have a spirit to body disconnection. So there's some type of miscommunication going on. And I said, how connected is that spirit and body? It's like 63%. Guess what I found? Trauma at 19 years old. I, I kept going like, what's up with this 19? She didn't tell me. So I just kept finding 19, 19, so quiet over there. I'm like, 19, oh, psychic trauma 19, kind of like you, like psychic trauma 19. Hey, uh, quick question. Why are we stuck at 19? She's like, oh, that's when my mom kidnapped my baby. Like, okay, that's traumatizing. She's like, that's when my fibromyalgia started. It's like, interesting. So then I worked on that, worked on that, worked on that. Got it to 100%. Her pain went down from a 9 to a 2 that day. Next day it was a 1. Next day it was a 0. It's been 6 months now. Guess what? Zero pain. Most doctors would say fibromyalgia, you can't. That's, you have to just take pills the rest of your life. The body, the, the doctors won't address the underlying problem, which is she had a trauma at 19 and her body wasn't communicating with her spirit anymore. See? So we can get really deep at that. That's physical stuff. I've helped people find to no job, to career, help people find their, their, uh, their dream soulmate, but they've always like, is there such a thing as soulmate? Dr. Brad throws it out there. He says, here's a really good one. Here's, if you guys want to find your love, this is the recipe. You guys for this? Number one is clear your heart wall. Number two is, are you open to love? Get it to 100%. And the third one is, I easily attract someone who's attracted to my higher self. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a, you guys, because ladies, you guys don't want no scrub. You, you, got, you guys want the high frequency guy, right? Okay, so you have to, but, but guess what you have to do to get that guy? You have to qualify. You have to qualify. Energetic, that's all. And we all qualify for happiness, but we have to qualify, you know, we have to just do it energetically. So, I just want to end with this, is that, how many of you guys do real estate? Anybody do real estate? What, what, is the, what do you think is the richest soil in out in Europe? What, just throw out, throw like, what, what country, what, what do you mean the richest soil? What do you think? Okay, like dirt. Yeah, like dirt, <laughs> yeah, like, like, you know, like area, where you know, it's a lot of rich homes. What do you think is the richest soil? Uh, Northwest. Northwest. Anybody else? What, anybody real estate agent? Huh? Someone says something. Did I just hear your voices? Yeah. Um, so the richest soil is the cemetery because too many people die with their gifts and talents buried with them. So the reality is, is like, we're living in a new era. It's the information age has got us down to this. Look around you. Lost space. Yeah. Look, look what the information has got us. You know, it's the age of like mind, information age. That, that needs to deplete. What needs to come up is the age of the heart. And where all of us deserve to be guided by our heart, where all of us can release our, our pains and leave it behind. And uh, I really feel this is the way to do it. And so uh, it was really, I'm really grateful I got to speak with you guys. I appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, feel free to like, talk to me afterwards. And uh, yeah, it's grateful. Thank you.
just want to make a quick announcement. I want to respect everybody's time. Let's give them another round of applause for Michael. So again, thank y'all for being here tonight. You know, we're hoping to have more events in the future. And so, if you aren't already signed up, please sign into the sheet so we can email y'all and be on our listserv. And uh, you know, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll be posting more events and you know. Sharing